Hello and welcome to the Road End Podcast, where each week we will speak to a new guest, get to know them and talk all things Liverpool. Hi everyone, welcome to the Road End Podcast. I'm pleased to say today I'm joined by Jen Mercer. Jen's a photographer who some will recognise from Hotel Anfield. She also works alongside Fan Support Food Banks, which is situated on Flagpole Corner on match days. How are you? I'm all right, you? Yeah, good, thanks. Good. Good to have you on. Thank you. Thanks for asking me. I'll dive straight in. So I've seen your photography and I've just been scrolling through and seen you doing T-shirts now. So you're going (laughs) up in the world. How did you start with like photography? What got you into that? So I've always just like done it. Like when I went traveling, I took my camera and I've always took photos. I just I hate being in front of the camera, but I love being behind it. And then through lockdown, even though I could still do my job, I used to just go out with my camera because we were allowed to go out on an hour's walk. And even yeah. now when I think about that, I think, what? Um, so I just went out taking pictures and then I got a new camera. And a lot of loads of people say I've got a dead weird eye like for the way I take pictures. And But I love doing it. So I started doing that to then set up a little Instagram and Twitter page and just posted my pictures on there. Just, just to post pictures, really, just to bring a bit of happiness, isn't it? Sharing stuff yeah. rather than the humdrum that's on there. And then it went from there, really, and then... I sold some pictures and donated the money to the food bank. And then people were like, oh, can I buy that? And I was like, oh, if you want, yeah. Because to me, it felt dead weird. It, it was just a hobby. Yeah. And then, so I, I had like a picture of like Anfield at sunrise that I took from New Brighton. And then people were booking me for events then. And then before I knew it, it, it turned into a second business from something that was just a hobby that I loved doing. When you said people said you had a weird eye, I got a bit worried then. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got a weird eye for like taking pictures and like I don't see stuff the way other people see it. I have like, um, yeah. You'll, if you'd it. ever see me in town just lying on the floor with the camera, right, just walk up, just walk past me. <laughs> but I'm probably taking a picture of something dead weird and there's a, there's a reason behind it. Or if I'm up a tree or something, like just, just be like, yeah, it's just Jen taking a picture. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, you're doing that on match days now in um, Hotel Anfield. Yeah. How's it been in there since you started? You must have some weird stories in there as well. Yeah, it was good. It's been good actually, but it is always funny when you're the sober one and everyone's drunk and you're trying to walk around with the camera. But I'll tell you what, people love getting the picture. So take a picture of us. And it's always the men always stopping me, take a picture of us. And then can I see the picture? Oh, oh my man. God. But yeah, it's good because it, I'm around the atmosphere anyway. I go to the match anyway. So I've been there a few times and done some pictures for them. And it's just nice to be in like a different atmosphere, isn't it? From, and just see people happy and well before the games anyway, <laughs> tending on the results after like. So you done that event on the weekend just gone, didn't you? With uh, Steve McMahon and who else was on it? Uh, John Aldridge. John Aldridge, yeah. Mm-hmm. So originally meant to be Ian Malby. Yeah. <laughs> How was that? How was the event? It was good, you know, um, because they done like uh, they had a little chat about the Liverpool days, and then there was some like Q and A's. And then there was like a raffle and some auction stuff and all the money went to this Abbey Lawns, which is a nursing home just, just down the road from there. So all the money was going to there. But it was that good because they obviously come up with some interesting stories and they proper bumped stuff each other. So it was a good night. And I was just walking around my camera, snapping people. On the floor? Yeah, under the <laughs> table. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest thing for me, which I've seen more so the last few years, is the fan support food banks. Before we get into, you know, why we're in this mess in the first place, why do you feel like you should be involved in it? What got you into doing it? So I, whenever I used to go to the match, I always used to donate a few tins on my way to the match, whether it was in home baked or at the van. And then when we went into lockdown, obviously there was no footy. So I was like, well, people are going to be struggling. There's no stuff coming in. So I did a few donations um, and got some food and they come and picked it up from ours so they could distribute it so then when we were allowed to come out of lockdown I was like I need to be more involved so I started helping out on a match day and then there's they have pantries through the week as well where people come so I volunteered at a few of them as well but yeah it was just through lockdown made me see that you know without that them donations on a match day we were going to be short of what we'd normally get. Are you finding that every other game or every game it's getting more and more donations or more and more people asking for food or how are you finding that? We find that obviously now we still get donations all the time on match days, both Liverpool and Everton as well. It's outside both grounds, but you might notice maybe even the people who donate might be struggling themselves now and they might not be, we still get loads. 
but we find that the need far outweighs what we're getting and that's across the board that's across the country so the need for is we we can't sometimes match the need of it so we do like and obviously now while the world cup's being off as well while the world cup's on i mean and the footy's off there's no match day collection just on that obviously you know from going the game yourself away supporters have a tendency to bring feed the scouts up at christmas yeah. time and all this absolute nonsense mm. be as honest as you can what's your message for that oh it's bullshit isn't it? And people need to stop it. Like, find something, like, focus on your own team. And, it, you know, you're saying feed the scousers, but fan sport and food banks is all over the country. We're in Scotland, we're in Ireland. You know, it, it, it's boring, isn't it, really? It's just, like, a boring shout. Like, find something else to say. And everyone's struggling. We're all, in the, we're all like, kind of in the same boat now. And it, it's just, out instead of, instead of saying that, drop some tins off on the way. You know, like loads of other clubs are on board with this. We're all in the same position. And I think it's just a shout. I don't even think half of them know what it means. They just sing it because everyone else sings it. So they like to be part of like a little tribe when it's just, you just need to pack it in now. It's not even funny. I've noticed it's the usual suspects, isn't it? Just yeah. trying to like spread a little bit and of hate between each other. They say like feed the scousers, but if you notice, it's always scousers that step up. Like it's always us that step up. We, like, the fan support and food bank comes from a Liverpool or Edmonton fans. We always step up and that happens in this city or we're always, we always come together. So I've noticed as yeah. well, it helps out when it goes to away games as well. Mm-hmm. There's the food yeah. banks everywhere now. It's I mean, let's just not go into too much detail on the government, but what's happened over the last maybe... I don't know, maybe 10, 15 years, maybe even more, the demise of the, the actual country. More and more people going into poverty. I remember going back as when I was a kid, going into school with a lunch, like a food box or um, a shoe box it was. Yeah. And you'd have tins and that, and they'd be like, we're sending this off to Africa, places like that. Like Harvest Festival, wasn't it? Do you remember yeah. you used to do stuff like that? And the scary and now, thing us. is now, it's here. Us, yeah. And I, d- I just don't understand how it's got to this and people are still accepting it and still voting these in and still getting on with it and I know that's fucking bizarre we that's went that's to that's Scotland nice. in oh I can't even remember what it was now it was pre-season anyway we went to Scotland to help um, Celtic launch their fan support and food banks up there and we got invited to the Celtic Blackburn friendly we went up and helped them launch it and since then obviously they've come on board and they're doing it up there as well. So it's not just north and round here, it's the whole country. Like I know West Ham have got one, City have got one. Um, and when they come up here, the, the lads that and that that do the food bank, they always come to us and donate. And then when we're away, we go and donate to them. So it's even though like footy banter's all good and well, isn't it? But a side of the pitch, we're all going for the same message, aren't we? Yeah, most of us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to, do you know what? I don't see enough of it. I don't see enough publicity. So on social media, Liverpool fans, and we all say bring bring a couple of things or bring yeah. some donations for the match. I don't think it's out there enough. It's okay us doing it between ourselves, but I don't think people realise the seriousness of this. There's people queuing now for food. Yeah, and- we, we see it in the pantries. Like, we have pantries all across the city, and the pantries are like £3.50. People come and pay, and they get like 10 items of tin food. They get fresh meat and then fresh fruit and veg, and then some like pastries and whatever we've got on the day, and we have toiletries and stuff and we have about six seven of them across the city throughout the week and we had on friday the one i i, I was at at west derby we had like 90 people in 45 minutes come through the door and that and that never used to be that we used to get like 40 50 and now we're getting like 90 and you know it's 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 like a, a mixed bag of people now like i think people always used to associate it with like people who didn't work and things like that but we've seen like i've seen a nurse come on after the night shift so it's, it's it's across the board and these are people who are like working we're all working and like and then when you go back to that you're going back to the strikes as well it, they, these are striking for what they deserve they're yeah. not being greedy you see it and it just it's heartbreaking like I've, I've i've been on there loads of times and just had to go and walk away for a minute because something's just got to me and i've just gone oh i'll just have to walk away and i think that's why i want to help because i might not be able to help financially all the time but if I can help by giving me time, it, I just do it for, yeah, I enjoy it as well, like helping out. That's good. You know, you're doing a far better job than most of us because it's it's all right for us saying sharing it, isn't it? But we need more sharing and more people it's to like do massive, it. isn't it? Like we're all small cogs in a big operation, I think, and any shares, likes. People people who come and they go, I've only got one tin today. I'm like, but if we all brought one tin, there's 50,000 tins, no kids that go hungry. Like yeah. people come with one tin of beans and they go, it's all I'll bring today. And I'm like, it doesn't matter. 
it really doesn't matter. And obviously we've set up that we've set up pages now where like people can donate money now because some people don't want to come to mass with loads of tins, do they? And we get that. Everyone's in the same situation. Of people everyone's struggling in some way, aren't they? I would like to see the club say something though, like let's say your match ticket when you come to the match. Do you want to you know, donate a quid of that mm. or round it up to, let's say it's 46, yeah. round it yeah. up to 48 or something like that just to help out, I think. You know, because like you've said there, people don't like bringing tins or people might want not want to donate online. But if you've got that option there, yeah, round it up a couple of quid. Yeah. The amount of people that do that. We we had something when, it, you know, when the, the footy got called off because the Queen dies, um, it was meant to be the game the next day. Was it the Wolves game? It was the next day, wasn't it? Or was it the Chelsea one? One of them was the next day. So they donated all the sandwiches to us. Brilliant. And uh, we went out into town and just gave them out to people. Because to them, like that day, that's all prepared. What are they going to do with this? So they donated it all to us, which I thought fair play because you don't want to see stuff go in the bin, do you? When it could no, help. but it's nice to see that as well because I think, yeah. you know, time going back or the the message people get from the book from the club itself it's just a business or whatever yeah but especially lately yeah especially lately and but you need to see stuff like that you need to see the good things coming from the club as well yeah definitely and you know everyone's struggling like you said and it's only probably going to get worse in the next yeah. year or two so anyone listening make sure you get your scran or get your donations <laughs> in because this is yeah. massively important not only to the city but the whole of the country by the looks of things I always say like one tin, like everyone's got that like tin of beans at home. That's just, it, obviously if it's in date, like that's just sat and they're not going to have it. Or like if you're out, can you throw like a t- an extra tin? And it doesn't have to be like branded name stuff. It's just a tin or like like anything that's non-perishable basically. Or we've all got that shower gel that our auntie got us for Christmas that we might not use. Just flash it our way. Like we will make use of it. Oh, I've got a few will. of them, definitely. <laughs> you know what I mean? Don't you ever get to set with you with all your link sets that you don't want? Just flash them our way. I'm allergic to Nivea and my auntie gets me every year. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So if you've got a message for anyone, obviously there's gonna be a lot of people who are either ashamed or embarrassed, however you want to say it, mm. who won't ask for help or they're too you know, like I said, too embarrassed or ashamed to turn up and ask for help or ask for food. What What's your message to people like that? There's there's no stigma attached to it. It's like a market. We have music on. We're all there. No questions asked. We don't ask questions. We don't want to know what your income is. We don't want to know what your status is. We're not we're not there to ask questions. You don't have to come every week. We're not going to hound you with stuff if you're not there. You just come along. You pay your £3.50. You get a little basket. You walk around, get your stuff, and then you leave. No one asks you any questions. We have music on. You know, a Halloween, we've done like a Halloween party, a Christmas, we'll be doing Christmas stuff, like we'll have Father Christmas there and giving selection boxes out and, and like presents that we've got and stuff. So it, it is, it's just like a market and you see the same people who come every week, you get to know them, you get to know the names, the families and stuff like that. So it, it is just like going to a market, like no one's going to ask you any questions and all the people who were there, we're all there for the same reason. Like no one's there to judge anyone, we're all like, but I can see how they might be like sort of attached to it. But it's not like there isn't a big sign saying food bank. There's no signage at all. You just know because you turn up and they're there. Where can we find these? Obviously, on match days for anyone who wants to donate, it's Flagpole Corner. You can Is also it... donate in Home Bait, which is over the road all Basin. the time, yeah. anytime you want, and the club shop as well. Oh, okay. They'll take I them didn't in. Yeah, the club they'll, shop take, yeah well. they'll take them in. And Home Bait, not just even on a match day, just anytime. Like if you're going past Home Baked, which is the place to get your pies because everything they have goes back into the community as well. They, they'll take donations in as well. And is that uh, Home Baked by the ground as well as the Yeah, literally facing one? our donation thing, yeah. Yeah, okay, great. Yeah, so make sure you do that for anyone who's listening. Um, yeah, make sure you do. Come and see us. <laughs> yeah, even that's... I always say to people, don't even have to donate, just come over and say hi, yeah. Just come and see us. Like We're all there every match day, three hours before kickoff. Um, we're there. Can't miss it. It's a big, like, purple, like, a container. And you grabbing the leg off everyone? Yeah, part more than likely. <laughs> Let me take a picture, climbs on top of it. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed, was it a week or two ago, Carragher popped by as well? Oh, yeah, we had Carragher and John Bishop. Brilliant. We did some filming with them, yeah. So they come by and obviously they, they, they're all about it, aren't they? The right to, it's the right to food, isn't it? That's what we're fighting for. And that's what it was set up by Ian, Dave and Robbie some blues and reds and we're fighting for the right to food because the other taglines like hunger doesn't wear club colours so we might be rivals on the pitch but off it we're all pretty much all of us are 
going for the same thing. We just want to help people, don't we? Okay, so moving on to Liverpool, what's it mean to you? So by the sounds of it, it's everything for you. Like your day yeah. job, your night job, the before the match, go on the match. Yeah. So what's it mean to you? So like I've always, I live in Anfield and I always have my whole life. So to me, the grounds is just, it's been something to see every day. I went to school, my school was literally ne- like pretty much next door. It's been knocked down now my school, but it was next to the petrol station by the cemetery there. And I'd see it every single day. I even remember, I don't know if you do remember the Mackies on the, the cop end. Do you remember? Yeah. Do you know what? It's sometimes we go there. You know what? And you tell people now and they go, what are you on of us? Oh no, that was that was brilliant. And the that. shop we where that like, long though, was it? No. But sometimes I'd go like after school and get a happy meal and think I was boss because I got a happy meal. And then the, the shop the shop used to be where like the cop bar like museum is now, didn't it? There. Yeah. But like I've always lived around there and it's always been my life. Yeah, it's just it's just Anfield and it's always been home as well it's home to where I went to school and I grew up just didn't go the match loads as a kid but obviously as I got older and I could take myself I went and there was just no other team that I would have just supported <laughs> it was just you definitely haven't got a little bit of blue in you no not <laughs> at all <laughs> what have you made of it so far then obviously the last few years under Jürgen's been unbelievable and it's been a bit hit and miss so far this season but a couple of good results getting into the World Cup break. What do you think? What's what would you take for the rest of the season? What would be your at the end of the season? You turn and go, you know, after that start, I'd have took that any day. I just take Jurgen, yeah, not leave him. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, yeah. I just I don't even want to think about that day. You know, no. yeah, I don't even want to think about what it's going to be like. I think people are too quick to like criticize, aren't they? But everything can't be like boss all the time, can it? Unless you've got like oil money coming in, do you know what I mean? But it can't and people just you need to take the rough with the smooth and if you support the club you support the club don't you it's just how it is but it, it, it was rubbish and it gets frustrating like I remember when we, we lost to Leeds at home was it yeah and I walked out the ground and was like well I don't know what this feeling is no because it had been that long and everyone and I was like I feel that flat I was like I don't really know what this is but it, it's it's Twitter I can't go on Twitter on a match day <laughs> I just can't do it they just People are mad, aren't they? They just, I'm just like, oh, just calm down. I use that for plugging this podcast. Yeah, and, um, it's it's the, probably the best way to get it out there for me. But after the match, oh, my I God. just can't not go on. After, it. Not even after the match, it's You're when sometimes it. like a team selection. Yeah, I, d- I don't know as well. Like, I don't go on it. Obviously, if I'm at the match, my phone's in my pocket. Yeah. If I'm watching it at home, my phone's off because sometimes there's a delay on the telly, isn't it? But people will sit and just tweet off with the match, and I'm like, yeah, are you actually watching it, though? Yeah, I don't even look. The only time I look at my phone at the match is if, like, a score flashes through off someone else. And I need to see, but it, it can be a bit of a cesspit, can't it? Yeah. But then it's got it's got its positives, hasn't it, really? So what are you thinking? What are you thinking? Top four trophies, what are you after? I'll have, I'll take, I'd take top four, like, um, trophy-wise, I reckon we could do the FA Cup again. We've yeah. got Wolves, didn't we? Yeah, just seeing what about United it. Everton getting drawn at Anfield as well? And City Chelsea that happened last year. They got they got them. Is they, that at they City something. It's at City, yeah, I think. Of course. Um I wanna say, yeah, Champions League, but I reckon we'll get like FA Cup again. I reckon we might get that. We'll definitely think, get top four. Well, yeah. I mean, top four, as much as we need the silverware, well, we want the silverware, which you know, I take fucking anything. The top four is a necessity, isn't it? It has yeah, to happen regardless. Yeah. If you don't win the Champions League, you need to be in the top four. That's what I mean, because otherwise we're, we're not in Champions League next year. And then is Jude going to come? <laughs> mm, yeah. <laughs> Jude. Or will it turn out to be Mbappe 2023? Oh, bloody hell. <laughs> it's, it's had a different year, hasn't it, for the last three? You just need to change, drop the, the last uh, the last number, don't you? <laughs> We asked our guests to choose their ultimate five-a-side team who they've seen live playing for Liverpool. Let's find out what they said. I mentioned to you about the end of the episode, I'll do everyone's ultimate five-a-side, either from the born to now. There's been some mad ones and there's been some brilliant ones. It's hard though, isn't it? Since my career, I was sitting there going... I honestly, and you got a pen in your hand. I know, I've written it down in everything. <laughs> Proper OCD. I, I literally couldn't. I was like, oh my God, this is so hard. Because you put great, someone though. down and then you go, oh no, but I like them. Yeah. And then you go, really like them now. And I'm yeah. like, they're going to get offended because I put them in. See, I, see, I've got two for each one, right? Because I just couldn't decide. So I'm going to give you the one. So I've got Alison in goal. Yeah. And then I've got 
I don't know who to say for that one. Throw it your gut. I'm going to go Tommy Smith. Ooh, I haven't had that one yet. And then I've got John Barnes and then Ian Rush and Robbie Fowler. Wow. That's Do you want to know there. what my other ones were that I weren't sure about? Go on. My other, so I've got two five-a-sides, but I'm allowed that, aren't I? So we'll the have your five-a-side versus the other one. Go on. So this other one is Ray Clements, Virgil van Dijk, Louis Garcia. Oh, Garcia. And then, and then Rush and Fowler again still at the end. I would never have said Garcia, you know. Why, why Garcia? I don't know. I just think he's likeable. He is likable. That's what I mean. He's like he's a like he's not he's not and he's not he's not a bad player, like obviously, no. but he's <laughs> likable. But yeah, that was mine. And I know I've gone a bit because I've got I've gone like I didn't want to go all like all brand new. Mm. So I've gone back, but yeah. So Alison, Tommy Smith, Barn, Bush and Father. That's mine. Love that. I think <laughs> at the end of like when I get to a certain point, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start putting them against each other and somehow yeah. figure it out. And then I'll put it on a Twitter poll to see who thinks it's best. Yeah, I just say, like, yeah, I, pro- I put proper put thoughts into it. I was sat there for ages. I was like, oh my God, it's not as if it's my team I'm actually playing. Well, some of the people who have reached out to who have had on like previous pods, I've actually just threw it on the toes there and then. And where you've just sat there and been like, I'm an for it for God knows yeah. how long their heads fall off. <laughs> That's what I mean. You need to know, don't you? You've got to proper think about it. Yeah. Yeah, that was mine. I like, did sit and think. I wanted to take one old school, and obviously, I love like I love Robbie Fowler. I think he's boss, so I thought he's got to go in it. Definitely. Um, but yeah, that's mine. That's my five. Let's call it a pod there. Ab. Thanks very much for coming on. Um, You're welcome. Thanks for having me. That's great. Um, I hope it reaches a lot of people, especially the food bank, but also your photography, because I've okay. seen bits and bobs of it. It's, it's a cracker. So for anyone oh, that needs yeah. to find it, where can we find it? So for the food bank, it's fan support and food bank. They're on Twitter. Um. Instagram and Facebook, just give us a little follow and anything like if we put something up, just a little share of it. Like it's yeah. massive, like how many people it could reach. And then me photography is just life in photos by Jen. So it's just me running around with the camera. Up Perhaps trees on the floor. Yeah. yeah anyway, just cl- climbing up. You ever just see me, just ignore me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks very much for coming on and um hopefully I get to talk to you soon. All right. Thank you. Cheers, Jen. See you later. Bye. Bye. Thanks to everyone for listening to today's episode. Don't forget to follow our social media, twitter.com slash the road end pod, and also our Instagram page, instagram.com forward slash the road end pod.